Basic knowledge of liver histology is essential for understanding pathological processes in liver parenchyma and their distribution. The most frequently used terminology in liver pathology is based on the liver lobule. The lobule is a hexagonal region of liver parenchyma with a central vein or synonymously terminal vein in the center and portal tracts on the periphery where three liver lobules touch. Portal tract consists of fibrous tissue and contains terminal bile duct, portal branch of proper hepatic artery, branch of portal vein, small lymphatic vessels and branches of vagal nerve. Parenchyma of a liver situated between terminal veins and portal tracts consists of hepatocytes arranged in trabecules. There are vascular sinusoids between the plates of hepatocytes. Their endothelial surface is lined by hepatic macrophages, called Kupfer cells. Sinusoids are not in a direct contact with hepatocytes. There is a thin space in between, called space of Disse. It contains hepatic stellate cells, so-called Ito cells, and hepatocytes protrude into this space by numerous microvilli on their vascular pole. The opposite surface of hepatocytes is called biliary pole. There are bile canaliculi between two biliary poles of adjacent hepatocytes. Blood flow to liver is unique since it receives both oxygenated and partially deoxygenated blood. The proper hepatic artery brings oxygenated blood from aorta to liver. Portal vein brings partially deoxygenated blood from portal circulation. Their branches enter portal spaces, merge on the level of sinusoids and continue as a single bloodstream via central veins. The bile flows in the opposite direction. It's produced by hepatocytes into bile canaliculi. They connect to canals of herring in periportal regions, which drain into terminal bile ducts in portal spaces. From functional point of view, liver lobule can be divided into three zones. A zone in the close proximity to the central vein is called central lobular zone, or zone 3. A zone surrounding the portal tract is periportal or zone 1. A region in between is referred to as midzonal or zone 2. Division of the parenchyma into such zones is a useful concept, since certain types of hepatic injury tend to preferentially affect particular zones. For example, circulatory disorders tend to manifest predominantly in the central lobular zone since this region is supplied by least oxygenated blood and its hepatocytes are more sensitive to hypoxia. On the other hand, chronic hepatitis manifests preferentially in portal and periportal space. Liver acinus can serve as a suitable model of functional liver unit as well. It consists of an irregularly shaped, roughly ellipsoidal mass of hepatocytes, joining two portal spaces and two central veins. The liver acinus is even more relevant to hepatic function, since it contains hepatocytes lined around hepatic arterioles and portal venules, just as the anastomose into sinusoids. However, the structure of liver lobule is more straightforward and understandable. Therefore, our videos are based on this unit. Despite its complexity, the liver has only a limited spectrum of morphological changes by which it responds to broad variety of insults. In microscopy, we can appreciate five fundamental tissue reactions, which often come in combinations. Necrosis and apoptosis, regeneration, inflammation, storage of pathological material, fibrosis and cirrhosis. The given morphological reactions will be described in the respective videos.
It's important to stress that many diseases share similar histopathological pattern. Therefore, microscopy on its own isn't sufficient for identifying a specific disease. To establish a diagnosis, a combination of microscopy, patient's history, physical examination, laboratory results and sometimes even genetic testing is necessary.